All right, Cheryl, I want to get you an update video on what we're doing with Gabby. Several things to, little housekeeping things to talk about first. Uh, first off, she's finally out of heat, um, so she's back in the regular kennel uh, with the other dogs. She has really become very messy in her kennel, which is kind of obnoxious, so we're having to deal with that. Um, uh, still wants to mark a bunch, but we're dealing with it. It's fine. Um, the, um, we've been doing, continuing our woe work, um, and she's doing fine with that. She understands woe, what that means. That's going well. So today we're ready to take woe, and we're going to take it back out to the bird field. So the first time we saw her with the birds, you know, she wanted, she would hold up, she would stop for just a second. And what we're going to do now is when she stops, we're just going to give her a little bit of a tug to slow her down. Today we're going to do a couple other things. Obviously, I got one of the quail here with me, and I'm going to be using my kick cage. So I got a little kick cage that I made here, and the idea is that I can put the bird inside the cage in the grass. Um, it still allows for plenty of scent to be transferred so the dog can smell it. Um, I'm going to plant right over here today, and we have a south wind. So the wind is coming this way. So I'm going to bring Gabby down this lane so she gets a nice nose full of bird. Um, the first time, yeah, the first time, I'm going to let her try it on her own. Um, more than likely, what's going to happen is she's going to come in here, and she's going to come and bash into the cage and try to get the bird. Um, if she does that, we will reset, come back, and we will come back up to the bird with the leash on her belly and make her woe. Once we make her woe and stand there, we'll kick off the cage, get the bird up, and shoot it. So we're going to make her do this. We'll give her a chance to do it on her own, and then we're going to make her do it. So I'm just going to come right over here. And these little kick cages are nice. As obviously, this is a homemade one. Um, it also keeps the bird fresh uh, and not dizzy. Hey, come on, Gabby. Gabby. Yeah, she's going to dive in. She's going to do it. Come here. So we're just going to heal away from it. And just keep the camera rolling. We're just going to walk back this way. I'm going to go ahead and grab the gun here. And the shell. Go back to the beginning a little bit. Keep following me, Trey. I'm actually going to kind of try to confuse her a little bit. Walk around a different way. So she doesn't know exactly where we are. All right, so we're going to get up here and go around this strip, and I'll let her loose. Actually, we're going to go right here, and I'll let her loose. All right, hunt him up. Hunt him up. Hunt him up. Let's go. Add a girl. Hunt him up. I'm not going to put the shell in the chamber. Yeah, and she is taking off full throttle straight back to the bird trying to get it so that's a pretty good indicator she wants to just kill it so and she just killed it gabby here give so the birds pretty chunk she just killed it pretty thoroughly. So now what we're going to do, put the bird back in there. This time we're going to make her do it. We're not going to give her an option. Now, thing is, you got to be careful about this because we're going to have to slow her down. Because that right there is not what we want to see at all. So, when you start slowing the dog down, you don't do this with electronic pressure. You do not use the e-collar to make the dirt dog stop. If you do that, that will create the tendency to blink. Blinking the bird means 
that the dog finds the bird and then goes away and leaves. We do not want her to do that. We want her to find the bird and simply stand still. We're gonna make her stand still when she finds the bird today. All right, good girl, good whoa. Good. You see, she's immediately knows we're in control mode, not go kill it mode. Good. Whoa. Girl. So the bird's right over here. Good. Focus on the dog. You can see, whoa. She's trying to pinpoint. So like right here, that's a point. That's a pretty point. Good. Two, nope. Whoa. I mean, that right there, that's real pretty. So, like, three, four, five. Whoa. Whoa. Girl. Whoa. Nope. Okay. Jarrett, why don't you come here and hold this? Come in here. Get the bird. Uh. Gabby! Probably should have shouldered that gun a little bit better. Forgot to have a live round. Let's see if we can get her to get out and find the bird. Uh, an APLA test. Um, when you send the dog, you have to, you can't move. You become the line. So, if the dog doesn't mark it terribly well, that can actually be a real problem. Like right now, she didn't mark that bird very well. And she's hunting in the wrong strip. That's fine. You can let the dog hunt. Um, and she'll get over in the other strip. She'll get downwind of it. She's actually downwind of the old fall right now. I'm gonna start helping her out just a little bit. Truett, you stay right where you were. The bird's right over here somewhere. I didn't think I threw it quite that far. Here you go, Gabby, right in here. Oh, I think she's got a nose full of it now. There you go, good girl, here, here. I gotta say, I am definitely very worried about using quail much longer with her. She is super hard give on these birds. I mean, she is eating them. So we really cannot continue using quail too many more times and letting her retrieve because she's just going to chomp them. And that's a habit we do not want to contribute to. So we're going to need to um, use frozen birds or use uh, something else so that we can... Um, so we can make sure she makes a successful retreat without chomping the bird to pieces. So it's getting there. The pieces are coming along. So we're going to be all right. Let's go ahead and call it good.